the uh, last panel for the day, Wonder Women in FinTech. And I have already seen a lot of Wonder Women who has joined us here. The importance of women in FinTech, in tech and innovation. I'm Shanmati Kartik, the panel moderator for this session. And I would like to invite a beautiful ladies for today. So uh, Ms. Amira Kadu, um, Professor, African Women in FinTech and Payment Mina. CFF, uh, Ms. Lebogan Mokabudi, uh, CEO Eagle Quest Africa. I hope I, I spell it right. <laughs> and uh, we have Ms. Gunjan uh, Dingra, Senior Director Sales, uh, Pure Software Limited. And uh, Ms. Lillian, uh, Co founder and CEO of uh, Mikango FinTech Limited. And Ms. Clara, CEO and Co founder of Cred Rails. Hello, all. How are you doing, ladies? Oh, good. Wonderful. Hi. Hi, Shanmati. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. So uh, let us begin the panel uh, with a little bit of um, introduction from all of the ladies here. So uh, we'll start with um, Clara. Sure. Uh, my name is Clara Wanjukodero, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Credrails. Credrails is building the open banking API for Africa. We're connecting bank, mobile money, and offline data into a single API that we then expose to enterprises and startups for a variety of use cases, such as lending analytics, KYC, on and off. You're muted, Clara, just a Did you hear? um the introduction uh just the last part <laughs> oh okay so i was saying my name is clara andre cordero and i am the ceo of credrails credrails is building the open banking api infrastructure for africa we connect bank mobile money and offline data into a single api that we then expose to a variety of businesses for different use cases such as lending analytics, KYC, payments, on and off ramp for crypto. Wonderful. So uh, we'll move on to Lillian now. Lillian, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Lillian McCoy, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Nipango, which is a personal finance application and software for financial institutions enabling uh, users, especially women, to manage their income and expenses, access investment opportunities, as well as uh, using technologies like artificial intelligence and blockchain to enable our users to access free financial advice based on their financial data. And we are based in Tanzania. Yeah. Thank you, Lillian. Um, next, uh, would, uh, we would like to hear from you, Lebogan. I mean, how do, how do you actually pronounce your name? Please uh, uh, teach me that. <laughs> yes. uh, my name is Lebohang Mukhabudi. That's how you pronounce it. Okay. Use label for the panel, no problem. Um, so I'm a digital financial services expert currently consulting to the IFC on mobile money projects throughout um, the African continent. Having worked with Fundamo and Visa building mobile money solutions um, in East and West Africa, as well as some Asian markets, and also worked with fintechs across um, East and West Africa as well, collaborating with investors and um, DFIs um, in to scale fintechs across the continent. Wonderful. So, yes, next uh, we'll move on to Ms. Gunjan Dingra. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, my name is Gunjan. I head the business for a fintech solution, a unified fintech solution in Africa. Uh, we work with telcos, with fintechs, and with banks across across the world. Um, I handle the region, Africa specifically, and we enable them in their digital journey. So by providing a platform that um, that enables them to move to digitization, it could be digital lending, um, digital payments, so through wallets, uh, through a banking service, through agency banking. So it's the platform to enable everyone um, with the mission of financial inclusion. Thank and you. And I'm just in Nairobi. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Ms. Gunjan. So next we move on to Ms. Amira. Amira Kudur. Yeah, hi. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Amira Kudur. I'm from Tunisia. 
I'm uh, currently a university professor. Uh, I share also a master's degree in innovation engineering and technology transfer. And also I'm a member of the executive board of the African Women in FinTech and Payment. Uh, a CSO that uh, will try kind of uh, projects. Uh, also, I'm a founder of a new uh, NGO called MENA, uh, Climate Finance and FinTech. Thank you. Thank you, Amira. So, okay, let's uh, start the panel with an open question and uh, we can jump in directly into that. So, uh, since Amira introduced herself as a professor, I, I just wanted to pose this question like, 35% of the higher education, they go for STEM programs like science, technology, engineering, all these things. I mean, female, uh, globally, I'm talking about female graduates, 35% uh, of them take STEM courses, but um, they end up leaving their STEM careers. So why, what, what do you think is a fast growing FinTech industry doesn't appear to be fair better in terms of women leadership or women um, inclusion? So, uh, yes, uh, I mean, we can start with Amira and uh, anybody can yeah. Um Really, it's a very important uh, question. And uh, also regarding all the previous panel, uh, maybe we must ask, uh, ask this question. Who is the, the change maker, men or women or both? Uh, who is the best in place to be, uh, to, be to do it currently? And are they a relevant question? This is really a relevant question of the gender dimension in the FinTech ecosystem. I will try to draw a simple and a fast mind mapping with you. So uh, firstly, uh, we must divide the FinTech value chain into interconnected fields that we contribute to what we want uh, as a FinTech ecosystem. What is the FinTech ecosystem? We have uh, uh, in the previous presentation, a presentation from Harvard, a definition from Harvard uh, about the FinTech ecosystem, uh, we can divide it into three uh, kinds of pillars. We have a disruptive innovation, technology, and financial services. For each element, it's important to draw the list of the needed factors to enable actors to create or to develop this component and this mindset is of crucial importance how can enable actor and we will uh, go or uh, we will um, well, i will answer your question for the specific case of women how can we enable actors to create to improve uh, financial services and to tailor and develop technology in this uh, side and uh, uh, my colleagues will uh, will give some uh, a real uh, um, solution in this part so the FinTech value chain is a linked field that will promote the FinTech ecosystem uh, uh, with its basic component, innovation, financial services, and technology. And now uh, let's uh, uh, try to imagine together uh, this figure. Horizontally, we can have the different fields interconnected, linked to, linked to the FinTech value chain. And uh, you have around this line the three factors, innovation, uh, financial services, and technology um, in reality we will uh, will be developed through uh, uh, different uh, as i have uh, said uh, since firstly firstly we have the component of culture and education i put them in the same pillar uh, the basic of uh, the different uh, uh, the development of each financial sector is uh, education here we have uh, uh, we have uh, really um, uh, not equal opportunity for men and women, and FinTech is in a major part linked to STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. According to the UNICEF study, uh, through mapping gender equality, STEM from school to work, uh, the study concluded that millions of children and young people are developing the same, the same skills. Um, so for STEM education, I will not discuss here a dropping uh, school, I will try to focus on the university level. The specificity of STEM education is a very fast growing field and it needs a continuing, uh, if you want, improvement. But an important part of women in the age after university can choose to get married. So they will try to either to just dedicate their full time to the family and house 
or they will try to work just on a basic performance uh, link it to STEM education, and it's not, it, it will not be sufficient, not in term, uh, either in terms of innovation or to get the uh, needed uh, level of performance to be efficiently uh, a change maker in the field. Uh, why? Because they suffer from a limited time to this or availability, and also a problem of uh, financial uh, uh, ability to pay, for example, uh, fees. So the part of education and culture. Uh, the second part, the second element in the FinTech value chain, we have culture education to customer. Now we are in the middle, the middle of professional, the startup and uh, um, women in uh, FinTech industry. Uh, after education, we have so the professional level in the form of startup or access to women to leadership position. Regarding this, the machine factor in the first element, so there is just 20% of women in the role of leaders in FinTech, according to the UN Agency for ICT, the study of 2020. Why this low level of women's uh, participation? Because FinTech presents a disruptive innovation in a basic, of, uh, in a basic uh, economic sector, uh, uh, which is um, finance. Here we have other scientific uh, determinants, which is women are risk averse they are not risk taker by nature so we need to empower women in the field of education we will not try to discuss stereotype and culture culture but in the field of education then we must tailor or try to empower women in the different levels of uh, exercising their uh, mission in the same level as a, as a teacher as professional as a student but also, we must also empower and try to train women to be more risk taker. Here we have uh, the, uh, the part of professional. Also, the uh, participation of women is uh, in a leadership um, position is limited, as uh, mentioned in the study. The third part now is uh, we can add uh, 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 the part of women as a consumer of fintech services. And here also we have the problem of technology divide. Women by, by nature uh, would like to have simple, uh, if you want, simple services. So uh, the, um, uh, the actors in the fintech industry must tailor technology regarding this specific need. Uh, uh, the mission of fintech ecosystem actors is to enable women to access and to use the technology in order to facilitate and improve fintech use and culture. Uh, so technology linked to financial services must be tailored to women's use. Platform apps must be simplified and they must provide direct access. And actually, with the after African women in fintech and payment, we, uh, we are working on a continental study to how we, we must tailor technology in fintech in order to satisfy the needs of women. Um, so so uh, in all the different levels of the fintech uh, value chain, we can find uh, the gender evidence and the relevance of the gender dimension. Uh, um, unfortunately, uh, the fintech, fintech can provide uh, an important solution to include women uh, in uh, to provide a, a solution to, to include women in the formal uh, eco ecosystem econo economic uh, sector but uh, until now we suffer from limited if you want studies or projects uh, that will satisfy really the specificity of women's uh, women's needs and uh, I think uh, regarding, uh, for example, the uh, African continent, uh, we have uh, a very important work uh, on this part. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Amira. Um, um, would anybody like to add on this point? Or, uh... Sure, I'm happy to add. Yes, please. Um, so I think, I think generally environments, whether it's corporate environment or business environments in the FinTech arena are not conducive. For, for women professionals, female professionals, and female entrepreneurs. And what I mean by that is that, yes, they are male-dominated, obviously, um, and then there's sometimes microaggression that happens in those environments, right? Microaggression, unnecessary comments, 
um, you know, that that may be, yeah, unnecessary comments are made. And generally, all of us human beings, male and females, seek a sense of belonging, see, seek recognition, and where we're valued, do we, are we more productive, right, generally, all human beings. And I think generally in these environments that are male dominated, women may either not feel valued, um, not feel honored and not feel recognized, right? And, and I mean, if, if we even look at pay, pay is not even equal, right? So once that is even unearthed, that pay is not equal, and then the woman is not, is not feeling valued or recognized, then there's a sense of feeling, what's the point? Why, what am I doing here? And productivity can, may decrease at times, right? And as productivity decreases, that's even worse than the, the woman is further not valued. So I think that that, that creates um, the, the, that women may come in out of education, you know, even they few from that point of view, but then they come in, they are few in an environment firstly, and it's, it's male dominate, dominated, but then they're less and less as they rank, go up the ranks, whether it's in the professional environment environment or otherwise, right? They become less and less. And then I, th I think another challenge is that generally, if you're in the fintech industry, you tend to be one, you know, you're the only one or you're one of three or, you know, the very few of you, right? And that can feel a bit isolated. You can feel a bit isolated um, and, you know, a lack of support, so to speak. Um, but I think the lesson out of there is that to seek support, from males and females, right? Not to go into an isolated zone. So I think what happens generally is that females come into the industry, they feel isolated, they experience this microaggression or this, this uncomfortable space, and then they get further isolated, they go into their own shells, they withdraw from the either the organization or whatever it is, and they get further isolated and then unproductive and then they leave. Right, and I think the solution is to seek out community, whether it's inside the organization or outside of it, seek out, you know, whether it's mentors, other leaders, um, seek out community that can support you. Seek out supporters. I think that's that's critical and something that we've probably all learned, you know, outside of in, in COVID and lockdown, that it's so important to build communities, even if they're digital communities, right? Through isolation, we, you know, it we're not productive, right? And we all need communities in order to be productive. Um, but I'll stop there. <laughs> Wonderful, uh, Ms. Levitt. So uh, talking about it, I just had a, a quick spark when you just spoke about it. Is this stubborn gender gap in fintech uh, leadership or the roles of women in fintech? Is It doesn't stem, actually, it roots from the lack of diversity in financial services. So is it the scarcity of women across the wider tech sector? I'm opening this question to anybody, so anybody can answer this. I think it is definitely a question of diversity across finance, across technology, um, but it's up to the people who are in these sectors to make it a place that's conducive for women. So like she spoke about, um, it needs to be a conducive environment where people want to see, you want to see people who look like you. Um, you want to be well um, compensated for the work that you do. You want to be, you want there to be what is a fair scale as far as um, promotion. It's very clear how you get promoted and so on. So I think that um, initiatives like women in tech and like women in finance, very important. Um, and that so is companies. So for example, as a fintech founder, making it um, <clears throat> imperative for us to be able to like close that gender gap that we make sure that our company is like 50 50 uh, male and female and that we are doing the hard work to make sure that we're a place where women want to work that where they're kind of employers that women want to work that we're building the kind of support system that would make it possible for women to thrive and not just survive and i just want to add to what clara said i think it also starts with us you know as we have um seen the challenges and gone through the cha challenges it's us as women in these positions who then have to to take it forward so you know i'm very focused on when building a team or when talking about sales i look for the women first i mean there may be a little bit of bias and there may be a little but i also think that it's responsibility and um you know to 
to bring those people on board, to give them the opportunities that we've had um, to pass on the lessons, to pass on, um, you know, all of that we've learned, we've gone through. I think that responsibility definitely lies with each one of us. And I know that um, that's, that's probably um, a very good way to, to pass on what we've learned. So that's, that's the only thing I would like to add on to what Clara said. Wonderful, wonderful. So, yes, uh, talking about it. So I, I'm, I'm opening the question for all of the ladies here now. Um, so we will discuss about uh, being, let's create case studies for the young upcoming generations, uh, women in FinTech. So let's, uh, let's, let, let's discuss one challenge you faced as a woman uh, in FinTech industry and how did you overcome it? So we'll start with Lillian first. Um, Miss Lillian, I think you have network issue. Yes, uh, we, we were not able me? To, Yes, now it's loud and clear, yes. Okay, so I'm saying the challenge that we face is um, access to investment. So in as much as, uh, you know, the ecosystem would say from the investor side, they say it's difficult to network with women or we are not putting ourselves out there as much as we should. We should. But even, you know, even with the effort that we make in putting ourselves out there, reaching to as many uh, you know, investors as possible, still you'll find there is some sort of biasness towards um, you know, investing in women-led companies. Uh, from, from my perspective, it could be a cultural issue where there's a doubt of the commitment that, that we put in, 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 into the project. I, I can't say that is the challenge for sure, but definitely we have experienced uh, a lot of difficulty ac uh, accessing investment, really. Uh, the other thing, uh, if, if I may add on, on, on the side of, uh, you know, getting our product out, out there, because our solution is targeted target to women, but the biggest challenge, again, we have been facing is women adapting to this solution. And as much as we help women to, yes, make smart financial decisions, access uh, investment opportunities, turn them to active savers and investors, but uh, one, they don't have access to devices. Two, um, their level of literacy is low. Again, based on the culture and history, especially in, in Africa, where women are not prioritized in accessing education. So when you target mass market and you're talking uh, specifically to women, they tend to see finance as a subject that's not relevant to them or for them. It's a male dominated uh, uh, subject. So whenever you push fintech solutions to women, there is a resistance. So this has, has, has uh, forced us to invest more in, again, educating women before you sell a solution to them, which I'm hoping is something that we as a community could find a solution to, uh, I don't know, empower women more or wake them more up more by educating them on the importance of participating actively in a form of finance, so that in the end we empower the entire community. So yeah, from my side, I'd say the challenge is both me as a female founder as well female as you know women that we, we sell our solution to there is uh, a big challenge there thank you Lillian who wants to go next um one of the chat well a couple of challenges about being a woman in fintech is one there's so few of us um, I post this meme that is of women like clapping when they see each other. And that's how I feel whenever I'm in a meeting and I see another woman in fit It's like, hello, great to see you. We know how hard that is. So it's so few of us. Um, and sometimes it can be like, oh, wow, it's just me in this place. Do I deserve to be here? So imposter syndrome can sometimes kick in. Um, funding is difficult. And it's not an African issue. It is a woman issue. 2% of VC funding in the entire world goes to women. When you think about it, that's crazy that a billion dollar, trillion dollar industry, just 2% goes to women. You cannot tell me that when women outperform men in academics, in the workplace, 
um, in anything where the stakes have or where the level the playing field has been leveled that suddenly when it comes to running a business that we're not as good that's just that's just not it's it, the facts the science whatever it is just doesn't support that um, the other challenge is that people can infantilize you um, people speak down to you and I remember once being in a meeting where someone shushed me I've never been shushed in my life and my reaction was, please don't shush me, I'm not a child. And there was a pin drop silence in a room of like 50 people. Like, yeah, don't talk to me like that. So boundaries with people because brown, women are seen in a certain way. So it's like, can you prepare this? Can you do the free labor for us that has nothing to do with your job? So um, those are some of the challenges. But the thing is, we're seeing more of us. We're seeing a lot more women working in finance, in fintech, starting businesses and like i'm such a fan i'm rooting for all the women who are doing this um and it's great to be able to just like connect to people who have the same challenges um talk about like talk about the challenge but also talk about how we overcome that challenge um we just raised around and it was one of the hardest things that i've ever done but, but like i'm part of that two percent and part of my job is to kick the door open so that that number doesn't step Wow, I, I just love the way you told it. Hey girl, yes, yes, you're here. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Who wants to go next? I think I'll share my experience. So yeah. um I mean, I love that, you know, there's always an acknowledgement when you see another woman in fintech. And um, this is such a good forum because it's just us. Um, who cares who's watching? <laughs> but I think for me personally, um, when I started as a woman in sales, um, more than the you know i've been the only one woman studying engineering i've been the one woman at the bank on the floor and then i was this one woman doing sales and for me what what challenged me most was they expected me to be a certain way they expected me to do uh, to sell in a certain way you know there's a whole perception about how a sales well it was always sales guy how a sales guy should be and um, I struggled with that because it just felt like I wasn't being real to um, to to who I am or um, to to my to my strengths, and I had to change that. So if I go into a meeting and I um, you know I talk about uh, how it feels or my intuition or the impact that I want to have with the cell that I'm making, um, it's it's unheard of. They just want to talk numbers and they want to. They want to see the salesperson in a certain way. Um, there's no, you know, and I, I did not want to be that. So more than more than all of the challenges that we've talked about for me personally, it was perception. Um, it was this uh, strength that it took to say, I'm not going to just fit in because I don't. I'm a woman. I'm not. I'm not one one of the sales guys, you know, and there's a reason why doing what I do feels so right, uh, which means I'm meant to do this, which means I'm meant to do it in a way that feels natural to me. And I have to follow that. So breaking those barriers for me um, was was important. It was challenging. Um, but I guess the point on community that we made earlier, you know, we all form our own community for for 10 people who take us down, there'll be those two strong voices who are like, you do you. Um, and that has been very important. So I think the the people pleasing, I had to stop that. I was like, I, I do not care how you think. Uh, I have to stop pleasing. I have to um, to understand where uh, what what I'm doing different. Um, and also just that perception, that expectation, you know, you need to pop that aside. Of course, we, um, I'm not a CEO yet, so I still have a job. So I still have to, you know, maybe uh, be a little bit in the box, but uh, to break that box and still, you know, be, be good and happy doing it. I think that for me was a challenge, but something that also makes me happy that I've, have, I've been able to overcome. So, yeah. You go, go. <laughs> Who goes next now? Uh, so um, I'll add, add to what's already been shared. Um, so I think the challenge that I faced and probably still face is how to be productive when you face offense and how not to take things personally. Um, so I'll give you uh, two case studies. One of them is when doing a project in Pakistan um, with a client, a bank in Pakistan, 
which, which was all males um, and even the tea lady was male. Um, and I met with my colleague there um, who's male and we did this project, this workshop and we're presenting. And then the questions were addressed to the male, my male colleague and every, the conversation was directed to my male colleague. And I was presenting at the time. And the question is, you know, how to stay in the room, number one, when that happens, um, how to still contribute value and how not to take offense. Right. So at the time I had to quickly understand and luckily I had done you know, some research on cultural dynamics um, in the country and just understand the cultural dynamics. Firstly, that it's not necessarily about me. It's not necessarily about me level. Right. It may be how women are treated in that bank. Right. So don't make it personal, because I think the minute you make any situation personal, you withdraw from the situation. Right. And the important thing is to stay in the room. Number two is then to engage with those people either in an informal setting and engage with them, um, you know, person to person and get to know them and almost break the barriers, right? Break the biases and have, have the transparent conversation in a calm manner, which is, you know, an art <laughs> more than anything else is how to, you know, unearth situations, unearth discrepancies, unearth discrimination, but in a very calm manner. Um, and it's something that I, I've been learning, you know, over time. Um, another case study um, in a project in Nigeria, where again, you know, working with a client in Nigeria, um, and then all of a sudden sexism, you know, became part of the conversation. Um, and this is a client, right? And I'm there as a professional. And, you know, I had to be upfront and quite direct that I'm here as a professional and this is a professional in engagement and, and nothing else. And to really be transparent and be direct in the situation, um, you know, also almost staging what your boundaries are um, in, in that situation. So, so, so those two, two case studies. And number one is on a board, I serve on a board of an insur insurance company, and there, when you feel like your voice is not being heard, how not to get emotional? Because sometimes what we do is we became, become emotional and then we raise our voice. Um, and sometimes that's not always, doesn't actually work, serve us. It doesn't necessarily serve us. Right. So how to in that situation to, you know, almost park the emotions and become strategic and tactful, you know, understand who's who in the room and understand how to bring your point across again. Right. So maybe they didn't hear me. You know, you know what's going on, but almost being strategic and tactful of how to navigate that conversation um, is really critical in either board meetings or any strategic conversations, because sometimes your, your voice will be dumbed down or somebody else will raise a point that you just raised. So even saying things like, no, but I, I raised that point, you know, and when I raised it, this is what I meant, um, rather than becoming emotional and let your, the tone of your voice change, but being really clear minded in that situation, I think is, is, is critical. Oh, I can understand uh, how much heat it took to break the ice. So and it takes a lot of courage. As you just said, parking down the emotions may, means a lot when it comes to uh, handling the EQ in that uh, current state of mind. So yes, Amira, please go ahead. I would just add uh, some, uh, uh, when we try to, uh, to analyze uh, data in general, we have two basic components, mean and standard deviation. Women in fintech and, and fintech ecosystem must be the standard deviation and not and not the mean. What is the mean? Women are risk averse. Uh, they not uh, they will uh, they uh, are, are risk taker. Uh, they are afraid from um, uh, from uh, this uh, from a responsibility in terms of uh, uh, financial sector and so on. We must be uh, uh, we must we must be the creator of change. Uh, we have had here in Tunisia a very specific experience in terms of Startup Act. It's a new uh, legal framework that tries to enable or to enhance uh, young people or young students to have or to create their own uh, startups from one hand. And also in the university, uh, we have created the, uh, uh, the profile of the student entrepreneur. So at the end of uh, their curriculum, uh, they can either uh, present a thesis, or, or they can present the uh, uh, if you want their new creative startups. And we have had a very interesting uh, uh, result in terms of uh, the contribution of uh, women. 
me, uh, me, for example, I work in the higher uh, uh, school of uh, sciences and investment technology. Uh, it's a school uh, of engineering. We have more than 50% of uh, uh, of students entrepre entrepreneurs uh, as uh, girls in STEM, which is a very promising, uh, a very promising indicator for the future. Wonderful, Amira. So, um, just wanted to add one more point here. Like, um, what what do you what do you ladies think uh, is the future of women in fintech? Like, I mean, a couple of questions on that part, and we'll take a few questions from the audience side as well. So, what do you think is the future for women in fintech in terms of skills, in terms of um, uh, career in terms of uh, new technologies, uh, in terms of new uh, solutions, uh, all these things. So anybody can start. I think it's bright. It's extremely bright. The existence of all of us. Um, I think that you can't be what you don't see. So every single time any one of us wants to quit, I think that should be motivation for it that you're inspiring the next generation of people who want to do this. Um, there are lots of programs to help women get careers in tech, to help women um, seg in, just, just like move into these careers. And I think it's important to do that. But it's also really important that people don't just do this for um, the wrong reasons. It's not that you do this or you get funding or you do this or you start, you start investing in women because you know that's going to help you raise a fund. It's because you actually care about that. So I've had experiences about, um, from people who want to invest in women, but like speak to me any kind of way or treat me um, as a commodity and like I'm a human being. And so I would say that just be careful at for women, be careful as to who is um, trying to tell you what to do and do what you want to do. But I think the future is extremely bright. But uh, I, I just wanted to understand, like um, investing in fintech solutions for women has to be done because, you know, 80 percent of uh, the fintech, I mean, your daily household purchases and everything globally, the decisions are made by women. Is fintech solutions for women is much needed? I mean, I'm talking about adding to that point. So there's that. And then there's something I say all the time. Nothing bad happens when women get more money. And I think that's what we need to do. Make it so that women can get more money. So there need to be more investing apps. There need to be more conversations about how we manage money, more conversations as to how to help women make more money. I think that's actually the greater goal because money gives you so many options and that's what we need to actually be investing in the ability for women to say no to abusive relationships to say no to bad jobs it's having the tool that money is because i think money is a tool and not a means to an end so having the tool of money so definitely and also for investors to understand why that is necessary women care about the stock market just like everybody else they care about alternative investments just like everybody else but having things like that dedicated to women is extremely important because again nothing bad happens when women have more money wonderful who would like to add dr Farah? yeah i think um definitely the future is bright um and we're testament to that and um, the shift is happening in my experience i've definitely seen that the focus um, is moving the conversations are happening women are supporting women and that for me has been a very important step because um, in the past maybe a lot of us haven't seen that but but we're changing that and um it, it is a very exciting time uh, to be a woman uh, to be a woman in fintech um to be to be in this industry to also be able to um talk about the impact that you know products are having on our end even though we sell to companies who would then enable financial inclusion i'm seeing that um the gap that they want to fill the big gap that these companies it could be telcos um it could be the banks it could be the microfinance banks and the fintechs that they want to do um the impact and the intention is right and i feel that that's the most important thing our intention has shifted to something uh, bigger and better, and we're all just supporting that. So the momentum has been created. We just have to, you know, keep it pushing. 
Yeah. So I think to, to add again <laughs> to what the other ladies have said is I, I think it's definitely improving, right? I think the industry is definitely improving because there are a lot, there are more women coming into, into the industry. Um, but I think what's shifted is that there's more honest conversations happening. So the type of conversations I think are evolving. Um, whereas before it was more about the, the, the challenges and you know these are the problems and these are the challenges, but now there's also a solutions, more collaboration. And, and more honesty, right? Even, I mean, what Clara shared in terms of, you know, as a woman entrepreneur, when I'm at a table with investors who say they want to invest in women, the challenge that I have is don't look down upon me. Don't look at me as a commodity. So that's an honest share. And that's something that, you know, you can target to say, okay, how do we solve for that? Um, and I think more honest conversations then will obviously um, improve, the, the, improve the, the situation, but also inspire more women to come in. <laughs> right because it, it can look a bit scary from the outside but i think as more women you know of different of diversity diverse women in the first place right are in the room then more women will come in and also assessing that there's different ways of playing in fintech right you can be an entrepreneur you can be um can be a techie you can be the salesman you can be an investor you can be the regulator there's so many different subsets to how you can play in the industry it's not just being the techie because most people think fintech is just being about the techie but there's so many different stakeholders in the industry and people can play. You can be a compliance person and come into the industry. Um, and so I think that's also important to, 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 eat, to tell, I guess, that more women can play in, in the industry or ecosystem. Just to also add, I'd say that I'm happy that more women are coming into the ecosystem in terms of uh, finding interest in FinTech, which helps uh, solutions that are brought into the market be more created for us because it's created by people who understand our problem. For instance, our poor spending habit. If a solution is created by a woman thinks you go to the supermarket to buy groceries, but I come back with shoes, bag. And put back food to us than solutions that are created by our counterpart. Sorry, I think my network is uh, unstable, but I'll, I'll try. So yeah, I'm saying I'm, I'm excited because more women are creating solutions for women. But the, the other thing that excites me more is that uh, in the market side. Uh, Lillian, I think the network is kind of uh, poor. So uh, I'll go with Amira first before I take your answer. Yeah. of fintech solutions in company. Yes, Amir, please go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Actors, uh, policymakers must know and they know that empowering women will improve uh, the role, uh, the whole situation of family, men, and children. Uh, so regarding the whole uh, digital transformation and green transition, the role of women is crucial. So the payoff of including women in the FinTech solution, which is a core uh, uh, pillar, if you want, of the economic sector is very important. And uh, I, uh, we have, I, I think, a deep conviction that the future will be better for women in this, uh, in this time. Wonderful. So we'll uh, take a few questions from the audience. Uh, so I will open the question to all the ladies here. So we need to understand that for financial inclusion to work, we need to focus on financial literacy not only credit and payments. So is there any, I mean, that's one question from uh, Dela Mazur. So yes, anybody can take this question. Yeah, um, um, we, must, we must facilitate uh, uh, the different solution that we, we, we will provide to, to women as a user. Uh, so uh, this will be a very important problem, uh, problem of uh, financial literacy, and also the acceptability of women of, uh, regarding fintech solutions. So is there anybody who would like to add or shall we move on to the next question? 
Okay, I'll um, move on to the next question. Is there an online platform that women in fintech can join where women support and motivate each other and act as mentors? That's a good idea. Yes, so there is something called African Women in Fintech and Payments um, they, that you can join. Um, they do have a link oh, in. Sorry. You should call the label. Yeah. The African Women in Fintech and Payments. Yes. Hmm. Yes. So, so anybody can join that. African Women in, in Payments and Fintech. Um, there's associations across the continent um you know of african women in payments and fintech and actually it's it started from europe so it's actually started in amsterdam so there's also circles in in europe of, of women in payments and fintech um so people can look that up on linkedin and then through linkedin there is then a slack channel of basically the women in in payments and and fintech so there's that uh, actually we have two association in the African continent, uh, one anglophone and one francophone. And uh, the uh, francophone uh, association is the, re the recent one. Uh, as Lebo has said, the, initi the initiative from, uh, was from uh, the African women uh, in Europe. After that, we, they have created the association uh, in the anglophone uh, countries. And uh, recently, we have created the francophone. Uh, association, they can join us. Uh, we try to empower women, especially in the field of uh, uh, knowledge training, uh, but also we share knowledge in all the different uh, uh, in all the different uh, sectors linked to the fintech value chain. Uh, we have a very highly uh, uh, we have a very important women with us from all the different uh, sectors. They have. Said. From education to uh, the uh, uh, women working in the governmental, uh, if you want, policies and measures. Wonderful. If I may, I also um, yes. wanted to add on the financial literacy. Um, I have seen in, um, you know, even on LinkedIn, a lot of fintech. Uh, companies that are focused on women a lot of them in nigeria which is uh, which is so fantastic to see because i'm i keep messaging them all the time to say can you please come to kenya because i don't want to start from scratch here because they're doing such um, you know, their saving products and their uh, investment products are tailored and focused to women. Um, and we've seen this trend again from Europe coming now, um, you know, to here. And that is, is very encouraging to see. So I would say that um, through these, you know, these women run companies focused on women are doing such a good job. And um, I hope these are just the first of many to come. Wonderful. So um, the next question, like, why do some find it difficult to support fellow ladies who are new in the industry? Most times women seek support from the male folks more. So why is this happening? That's a question from one of the audience. I want to say something. I think that it's a stereotype that women don't support women. It's a stereotype that works for men. Uh, more than it does. I've never met people who are more supportive than women. Like I said, whenever we see each other in a room, we want to connect, we want to speak to each other, we want to open doors for each other. Um, this idea that women are each other's own worst enemy, I'm yet to find anyone who can give me solid statistics where they can be like, because of this and this and this and this, in the history of humankind, I can therefore make this conclusion. People would like to take one instance and make it the fact when it's just one instance personality some of these things happen uh, people are busy it's just not a good day but if a man was to say no we would make different um assumptions about why he said no but when a woman said no she doesn't want to help me she wants to be the only person in the room i don't think any woman who's ever been in a position of power looks around and says it's great to be here by myself i want to keep being here by myself i would close the door to everybody else so just because someone has one two bad examples half the world is female and until you can show me a statistic that says 20 percent of 3.5 billion women do not help each other i think that that's just reaching so yes uh 
one more question. In Africa, we have a huge number of women in the rural areas who are yet to be financially included. So how are we including them financially via FinTech? Um, so I can I can talk a bit about that from a, a product perspective. Um, in the conversations that I'm having, uh, the most exciting conversations are those on a responsible digital lending. And that that is where I'm seeing that um, you know, the, the target audience is women, is women run businesses, uh, because it's not digital lending is something which is not picking up in that demographic. Uh, it could be financial literacy, it could be access, it could be, I know someone touched on the kind of phones and the devices that they have, or it could just be a knowledge and know how, you know, maybe they're in a remote area where they don't know these complicated products that have been put out there. Uh, but the important thing is that people are now um, understanding the gap, something is being done. When we are asked to design products um, for these companies, it is keeping in mind that it's simple, um, you know, it's accessible, uh, it's, it's, it's relevant. Um, so in digital lending, I'm seeing that a lot of the conversation is shifting from, um, from that complicated structure to, to something simple and straightforward that can be used. And I think that's very exciting because, um, to, for them to have access through um, a phone, a USSD, a mobile app, it's it's uh, something that is so basic nowadays, you know, and it's uh, we need to meet that, bridge that gap. Uh, but it's definitely happening. And I think digital lending is responsible. Digital lending is is something that is uh, is doing that through banks and through telcos. Wonderful. Thank you, Gunjan. for uh, uh, taking that and uh, uh, we'll close up with one question for all of you and we'll make one round uh, of this question to each one of you here. So um, what are the potential improvements in the industry you see as women uh, in FinTech, which can, comes under the umbrella? So you say one, two, and three, these are the improvements I would suggest or I would implement as a woman in the industry. Yes. So we'll um, Please repeat the that. question. Sorry, please so, repeat the question. So it's more about the potential improvements in the industry. You as a woman would suggest or implement uh, that would uh, make the industry better. So we'll start off with Lynn. <laughs> Still need to think about my answer. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> um, what improvements? So I think more collaboration um, amongst women. Um, so amongst women who are serving different disciplines or serving different roles. So, you know, here we we are each serving a different role in a way. So, you know, more collaboration between an entrepreneur, an investor, a regulator, a professional um, who are all female. I think a lot more of that collaboration would definitely be really powerful in the industry. Um, so across sectors, across yeah, disciplines, I guess, disciplines of, of what you do in the sector, but also across the world. Right. I also think more collaboration across the world um, so that we can discuss whether it's cultural dynamics, um, whether, you know, in South Africa, this is what happens in Kenya. This is what happens in Nigeria. This ha happens in Asia. This is what happens in India. This is what happens. But also those conversations, global dis discussions will also decipher that this is actually it's across the world, right? We actually sometimes face similar things across the world and we can learn from each other, um, right? And I think that that would help um, more of those conversations and also not just conversations, but actually let's start doing business together. Um, so something that men are fantastic at is collaborating and actually doing business together. So let's start doing business together. Let's start investing in each other. Um, let's start collaborating services. Um, and I think that will obviously definitely, you know, grow, grow um, women in the industry. Yeah. Wonderful. So next I would uh, uh, take Clara on this. Stop over mentoring women and start giving them money, especially um, for startups. Like I'm over mentored. I do not need another workshop to teach me how to speak to investors. I need investors to invest in my business. Um, so that would be definitely the first thing that I would improve. Just give women more money. Um, the other that I would do is definitely that collaboration um, where we're talking to each other, where we form our own little clubs, where we are actually doing the things that men do for each other, where men will recommend each other for a job, where men will 
um, have these deals that they do um, that none of us will ever know about, that you're introducing your um, frat brother that went to university to your boss because you work at this investment fund. That kind of stuff, um, I think, definitely needs to happen. And I will say, I have seen it happen. Um, a lot of the stuff that was uh, possible for credit deals in terms of investors was because other women opened the doors for me. Um, I think that there need to be enabling work environments for women. Um, if you say you want to hire women or you want to be a company that does right by women, um, start having sexual harassment policies, start having um, policies that make it possible for there to be whistleblowers and I'm, like, I'm actually reporting something that's going to happen. Um, support women as they want to start families and stop making it feel like I have to stop being who I am to come to work. Like I have to leave a part of my personality or a part of my identity um, when I come to work because I can be my full self because um, children need to eat, um, families need to get fed. So the fact that I'm all of this, I think makes, or, or people are all of this, makes them better um, workers. Um, and I think that we need to stop seeing women working in technology or working in finance as a minority or as something that is such a rarity. So it's just another job, just like it is for everyone else. And that means so many other people can keep joining. It's not, I wouldn't say it's like easy, but very few things in life are easy. So it's just thinking about it as a job to be done and getting, um, get going. Wonderful. Well, I'll, I'll take Amira first before we go into Amira. Please go ahead. You're muted. Yes. Okay, just give me one minute. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll try to unmute. Okay, so I'll take Brinjan now. Um, no, I think um, what what Lebo and Clara have said, absolutely that. The only two things I'd like to maybe add is to be each other's cheerleaders, um, you know, to, like I said, to 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 mention in your network and in the access that you have what um, other women are doing and to really you don't need to talk them up but just to to open up doors and to create that space that you know women feel comfortable and proud in what they're doing and to normalize that to normalize talking about our success I feel like we're so okay I can't say we but sometimes in some situations we we shy we're shy in in saying out loud what we've done, what we've achieved. And um, I feel like it has to be normalized. We don't have to go boast, but it's it's a hell, it can be a healthy, positive conversation. Um, that is very important to normalize our success, to normalize, um, you know, wanting it all. We don't need to say we can only have success at work and therefore we must sacrifice and that's normal. I think it's normal to want it all. And it's, um, it's, it's just normalizing those healthy um, overall conversations. I think that's what I would like to see happen, um, an improvement, a suggestion, um, yeah, and our responsibility. Wonderful, wonderful, Gunjan. Yes, Amira. Yeah, uh, I think that we must create this kind of community. Women must empower women. Uh, especially in the field and men must also empower women because when women is empowered she will empower men this is the simple uh, equation uh, that uh, we must take in our mind wonderful so i i think i could summarize all of this and i could put it into one phrase i would say each one help one so yeah that would be uh more than like inclusive uh, inclusive in the inclusion in your ecosystem opening the contact sphere for more women and giving more money to the women yes that's not there's no there's nothing wrong there's nothing nothing could go wrong if the women gets more money as clara just said so that was a wonderful discussion with you ladies and uh, 
uh, we had almost like uh, 15 minutes of discussion on this uh, fintech uh, wonder women um, i mean includes inclusion of women in uh, innovation and tech thank you all for giving your suggestions your insights to a lot of people as audience as women looking at you as examples here so thank you very much thank you everyone thank, thank you. you thank you thank you, thank you.